So our goal at GrailBio is instead of detecting here on a battlefield where you lose, we want to shift it to where you can win. Why hasn't there been this early detection prior to now? What is it that happened in the last few years that made you think, oh, this is, it's time to start a company that's going to do this? Yeah, this timing matters a lot. And Grail is, is really a, a bet on the intersection of, of timing of three things of us uh, having made enough progress in the understanding of fundamental cancer biology and how it works and why it works that's really enabled by underlying sequencing technology. So our, our test works by uh, doing what we call ultra-deep genome sequencing of the, of the blood that we get. And in that, we're looking for circulating nucleic acids, uh, fragmentary DNA and RNA that's shed by cancer from its very earliest stage. And it's really only been the last uh, couple of years where sequencing technology has come along far enough where the accuracy is there, where the economics are there to be able to pull that off. Um, because we're sequencing an order of magnitude broader and two or three orders of magnitude deeper than anyone else has done before. So we're generating on the order of a terabyte of data for each uh, test subject. Now, just to make sure I understand this, I, I would have thought that uh, a genome sequence is sort of canonical and it's your sequence and that's one thing, but what you're saying is that there are sort of these markers that are cancerous RNA or DNA that's in the bloodstream. Exactly, exactly. And that's what we're, that's what we're measuring and those are shed by cancer. Uh, it appears the underlying biology from the very earliest stages of cancer. And there has been, you know, over the last 50 years in, in oncology, there's been uh, uh, people pursuing other mechanisms for doing this. Um, and they're commonly known as biomarkers. And the majority of them have been uh, either protein-based markers or antigen markers. Uh, there's some uh, uh, ones you might have heard of, like uh, PSA, prostate-specific antigen. There's others for uh, um, uh, uh, GI uh, type cancers. There's one called CEA, carcinoembryonic antigen. Uh, there's others, CA-125, CA-199, uh, that are very specific uh, uh, markers. The challenge of those has been, though, that those are operating in a very complex system in your body, and they're really second and third order effects. They're right. symptoms of symptoms, and because the body is so complex, because there are so many compensating factors in the body, it turns out that with those uh, biomarkers that people have historically attempted, the false positive rates were too high, the false negative rates were too high, so there was never any net benefit being delivered to, to patients or to the medical system. Instead, what we're measuring uh, with the circulating nucleic acids, DNA and RNA, is really a first order measure. We are measuring the cancer itself. So it's our expectation that we will have a much more accurate, uh, uh, much lower false negative, much lower false positive uh, test that will have uh, ultimately then much greater impact. 